All right, so in that last video, I saw how we could create one plot that might show um, how these values vary over time. Um, another thing I'd like to do is I'd like to get some sort of uh, sense of the distribution of values, right? Do I get a lot of fives? Do I, I get a lot of um, twos? Things like that. And, and maybe when I'm asking that, what does the distribution look like? I don't really care about the time or the order of the values. And so there's different ways I could do that. Um, one way is we could create um, some sort of histogram. So let me try starting with that. And, um, and so let me actually make sure my web server is still running. It is. Um, so I could come down here and I could say, um, I wanna look at the distribution of my values. And so for this, now I'm gonna have, um, let me do an H1. Uh, if I wanna look at my distribution over here and refresh that, Okay, so I have to create something um, called distribution. I'm gonna create, I'm just gonna copy all of this actually. I do this and, uh, and have distribution here. And, um, and now instead of doing a plot, I can say uh, histo and histo, or actually it's just histogram, H-I-S-T, is on underneath there. And, uh, and I, let me just get rid of this for now. We'll keep it simple. So I'm gonna do that and let me refresh over here. And um, let me see what, what it's unhappy about. Uh, was it down here? I think so. Um, it's complaining that I have, um, it's overriding an existing endpoint. So it's not happy because I have two functions called the same thing. So maybe I'll call this one uh, my distribution. And so I'm gonna run that. And then I'm gonna come back here and refresh this page. And, uh, and then I can see as I keep getting more values, it fills in that histogram. Okay, now histograms um, are not necessarily great for showing distributions. And in some ways they're very intuitive, but there's a few things I don't like about them. One is that how it looks is very sensitive to how many buckets you have. Um, eventually, if I, if I were to run this and I were to say something like um, bins equals 100, and then run this and um, well, actually, let me let me change this a little bit. Instead of having just a random integer, let me get some floats now. Uh, I'm going to say Python random. Let me look up how to do the random uh, float. So, so you can see that if I call this function right here, random, I'm getting a value between 0 and 1. And so one of the ways I could um, get a range of values is, is by over here. I could just say that dot random. And then that'll be between zero and one. So I can multiply this by something like sex, right? So I could do that. I'm gonna get a full range. So if I run this now, and you can see that when I have uh, lots of buckets, then what's going to happen is that, and, and I'm dealing with floats now, what's going to happen is that I really get something that looks like a barcode down here. I never really get enough values to have a bucket with one, one, more than one entry in it. And so it'll be very sensitive to how many buckets I have. That's one thing I don't like about histograms. The other thing I don't like is if I'm dealing with a lot of different um, uh, columns that I wanna look at the distribution over. If I wanted to plot several, several columns, there's absolutely room for that here, right? Each column's a new line. Um, if I have say four or five columns though, um, it's really hard to plot multiple histograms on top of each other, right? I maybe can use transparency or something, uh, but it's probably not gonna look great. So students often come up with this other strategy which I think um, is somewhat of a good idea for looking at the distribution. And the idea goes like this. And instead of having um, a histogram, we're gonna go back to our line like we did before, uh, but rather than having these values in the order they were given to us, we're just trying to get those values sorted first. So they're gonna be from small to large. And so I'm gonna refresh this over here. And if I keep doing this, you can see that there's this shape that's emerging emerging down here. And, um, and the values are along the x-axis from small to large. Um, so for example, um, if I wanted to read this, I, I could look right in the middle, right? That was the middle value. And I could see, well, where does that line hit? Let me, let me try to do this a little more precise. I look at that middle value, where's the line hit? And I can see that the median of this data is about two. Right, so that's what I could do, right? Like on the x-axis, I have all my values sorted from small to large. And on the y-axis, I have, well, what were those values? 
Now, um, this is actually a very similar idea to a more standard kind of plot, which is the CDF. And the CDF does two things. Um, one is it normalizes um, from zero to N, uh, normalizes to zero to 100 instead of zero to N. So we're basically going to percentages. Right, right now you can see my um, N is something like, um, uh, what is it, something like 13 or 14, because that's how many entries I have, right? So you can imagine that I, I change it, so now that's 100% instead of um, you know the number of the value. And so that's one thing I can change if I want a CDF. The CDF that we're going to do, that's, that stands for cumulative distribution function, by the way. Kind of a more complicated thing, but still it's based on the same idea that a lot of people come up with. That's one thing it changes. The other thing it changes, which is a little bit strange, is it swaps the x and y axes, right? So if you do this thing, which was very simple, right? I mean, all I did was I sorted, and actually I'm typing all of this inside of the wrong function, right? And this is all up here. Right, so my first idea for visualizing the distribution was just to sort the values before I make a line plot. Um, if I make these two additional changes, if I normalize and then swap the X and Y, well, then I may have a CDF, which is a very standard kind of plot, and that will help us understand what's going on. Um, so I think let's do this. Let's, um, let's start with the second part, and then we're gonna go back to the first part. So I'm gonna swap the X and Y axis. So I'm gonna say here, that's my series. And if I want to get the reverse of that series, then what do I do? I, I, I have to pass in both the values and then the index equals um, index. And I want this reverse to be switching around the index and, and, and values here because the index goes on the x-axis. So for me to switch the x and y-axis, that means my index becomes my values and my values become my index. So, so here, I'm going to say s.values. And here I'm gonna say s dot index, right? So that's gonna be my reverse. I'm gonna plot that like so. Okay, so that's the second piece. I'm swapping those two. And um, and if you're paying close attention, you might realize that some of these values I had might be repeated before. So my new index is gonna have some repeated values. Uh, that would not be okay with a Python dictionary. It's absolutely fine uh, when I'm dealing with a pandas series. Okay, so I'm gonna do that and refresh this over here. And maybe I have to restart this. Uh, I guess it crashed on me. I'm gonna do that and I can keep going now. All right, so that, that seems good. Maybe actually, let me do something like this. I think um, uh, I, I want to show that there's actually, um, right now it's uniform, right, which is not great. Let, let me see if there's some other distributions here. But I get a normal distribution, for example. Um, there's a bunch of different variants of that. And so maybe I'll, I'll just sample from this one. I'm gonna sample from, uh, from Gauss. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna say Gauss, like that. And maybe let me just add some something to it so um, it's centered somewhere. Let me refresh this a few times. Oops. And I need to restart my server. Sorry, I don't want a condition there. So I'm gonna run this thing and refresh over here. Well, what happened there? Oh, and I have to pass in, well, what is my center and then my um, deviation. So maybe I'll just say center three, deviation two. Not really important for this example. But I'm gonna do this, and if I refresh it a bunch of times, I start to get this um, S-shaped curve down here. And, um, on the x-axis, I have all the different values that I've appended to this list. And then on the y-axis, depending on how far that lands on there, I can see, well, is it in the middle? So, so just like before, I can start here, roughly in the middle of the y-axis, I can go over here, and I can see that the median is about 2.5. Okay, so, so that's good. Well, let me try to shape this up a little bit more. I think if I really want to see the proper CDF, I have to, on the y-axis, say what that is and normalize. Instead of going from 0 to 16, I should go from 0 to um, 100%.
So here are my uh, my index, right? So that's uh, uh, that that's good, right? And, and what I want to do is um, the way I'm going to normalize that is divide it divide it by how many values I have. And um, let me think a little bit about that. So so if we index from zero, let's say I have 10 items, we index from zero, the biggest value is nine, and I'm gonna be dividing by 10. So this isn't quite right because it never quite gets to one. So I, I, I guess if I wanna do it like this, I have to um, uh, add one before I divide by the total number. And if I wanted to go from a zero to 100, I can multiply this all by 100 on the front. Okay, so let me run this over here. And um, now I can see that that y-axis is going from zero to 100. The other thing that I wanna do is add some, uh, 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 some axes labels. So I'm gonna say ax.set x label, and these will be, um, you know, maybe the number of errors, right? That was kind of what I imagined that I'm measuring. And the AX set Y label will be the percent less. Maybe I'll just abbreviate that percent sign. So I may run this a bunch of times until I get that nice um, uh, uh, S curve like before. And so now what I can see is that if I want to read this, oops, what happened to my, um, what happened to my uh, axes labels? Why did that not show up for me? So, so I'm not trying, quite sure why that's not showing up for the moment, so I'll follow up with that after this um, recording. But on, on the x-axis, right, I can see, well, what values do I have? And then on the y-axis, I can see, well, what percentile is that at? Because this y-axis should be telling me, well, what percentage are less than that specific value? So I can see about a third of the values are less than two, about 60% of the values are less than four.